Today I fucked up by sleeping with crush while a week old tampon was still inside me. This happened a couple of days ago. Clearly you lot of strangers are the only people I can ever tell his horrendous story to. I have endometriosis, which means I have to take the pill constantly to prevent my disease progressing. Lately I've been having a lot of spotting while on the pill, and so I've been wearing tampons daily for a few months. About a week ago I noticed I was getting nasty discharge with a horrible smell. I assumed it was a yeast infection but didn't have any itching, so I was a bit confused. I booked an appointment with my GP which was scheduled for today. A couple of days ago, I went to a house party that my crush also attended. To my delight, we really hit it off and ended up getting down and dirty. I gave him the heads up that I had a bit of problems going on down there right now, but he didn't seem too concerned and was happy to keep going. It didn't go very well he only fingered me for a short while and didn't finish when we had penetrative sex. I just ended up giving him a BJ and we went to sleep. All I could think about was how much I stank, even after having a shower immediately before and after doing the deed. Today, I had my GP appointment. I expected her to tell me that I had a bacterial infection of some sort, but she told me to go to the bathroom and, dig around in there. Baffled, and sure that I wouldn't find anything, I stuck my hands in there. Sure enough, the nastiest, stinkiest spawn of Satan plopped out of me. I gagged, almost cried, and cursed my vagina into the abyss. I didn't even know this was possible, too long did not read. Have endometriosis so always wearing tampons. Went down and dirty with my crush while a little smelly. Turns out I had a week old tampon lodged inside me. Girlfriend works at a gyno. This happens all the time. Luckily yours wasn't deep enough where you had to have help getting it out. My lady said she had to do a retrieval of four-month-old one. Said everyone in the room was gagging from the smell and it was the most embarrassing thing for the patient. Sorry it happened to you. If it's of any comfort, it's actually more common than you think. I know at least four women it happened to cold sweat smile. You're very lucky, as you could have gotten toxic shock syndrome. It's not a good idea to wear tampons as a preventative method against possible spotting. I get that it's annoying that you might bleed a little at unpredictable moments, but I would strongly advise against the use of tampons. Maybe get some period panties. Or do a stop week for your pill, after this week the spotting could be gone. And here I am freaking out about TSS if I'm even close to having one in for the max recommend time. Here I am, on a business trip in a fancy nice hotel, having fantastic breakfast, dressed up all nicely for a change, enjoying my scrambled eggs a cute woman giving me looks from the next table over, scrolling Reddit because I'm a socially anxious nerd, clicked on this thread, started gagging and salivated onto my eggs while she was watching. Phenomenal morning to you too. Good TIFU. Very happy to see, normal, TIFUs for a change and not the new norm of, today I fucked up by choking on my husband's girlfriend's boyfriend's penis while overdosing on meth. I read about something similar recently, as a man I had to ask a nurse friend as she tells me the gross stories. Yeah, this is oddly common, and I'm glad you didn't get a bad infection that can apparently happen. Today I fucked up by ruining a job interview. This actually happened today and I feel like crawling into a hole and dying. Things have really not been going my way for the last few weeks. Among other things, work is a sinking ship. Four people from my six-person team resigned effectively leaving my department dead in the water and forcing me to go back to my old department, where I was extremely unhappy, so I'm looking for new work. Last week a recruiter got in touch with me. They'd found my website and have a UK-based client that needs someone to do their content and branding, and they liked my work. I was ecstatic and told the recruiter to set up the interview, which was today. I did my homework and I was ready. The interview was with the founder and the head of marketing. Once we were all on the call, the founder said he was having some connectivity issues, and there seemed to be some audio issues on the marketing head side. I got one of those ring lights so I could look less grotesque in Zoom meetings, turns out that's more of a genetic issue, but anyway, and set that up because the interview was quite late in the day for me, time difference, and the lighting was bad. I plugged the USB for the light into my laptop, which I don't usually do. If I use it I normally plug it into a USB port in my desk, which plugs into the wall. Also relevant, I live in South Africa, and we literally don't have enough electricity for everyone so we have these rolling blackouts. It's called load shedding. I was aware that my area was supposed to start load shedding at 6pm, and my interview was at 5. 
Anyway, about two minutes into this interview the light in my secondary screen just go out, and I can't see or hear the interviewers anymore. Then I just get so mad and just lose it. This is obviously the worst time for a power cut. Is it load shedding? Our electricity provider is useless, they're never early for anything, even power cuts, so I figure my smart meter must be running empty. Maybe something tripped. So I'm just cursing up a storm and yelling at nobody in particular, and I run to the garage to check, but it seems like everything is running as it should. I go back to my work area, and the light and screen come back on, and I'm online by some miracle, so I rejoin the call and apologize to the interviewers. I explain about load shedding, and we talk about how we might mitigate that if I should join the company. Then we talk about my work for a bit. They seem really happy and excited. The interview was scheduled to last 45 minutes, but after 25 they tell me they still have a few more candidates to interview but they'd be getting back to me towards the end of the week. I'm a bit bummed out because I did so much prep work for this interview and I feel like the technical issues really threw me off my game and I didn't give it my best, but I smile and thank them for their time. Then they say, we like your energy, you really crack us up. I didn't know how to respond to that because I wasn't sure what they meant. They saw me fumble a bit and say, your internet didn't disconnect earlier, we could hear you yelling and cursing. We thought it was hilarious. I think I must have turned red and looked like I was about to cry because they were like, no, we think it was cool because it shows you're authentic and human, please don't feel bad. I apologize profusely, but I think they could tell I was super upset still, because they were like, no, it's really fine, we enjoyed it, please smile for us so we know you're okay which seemed a bit infantilizing but I had just subjected these people to some truly horrendous language, apparently. I smiled for them and we ended the interview. I don't know if they were being genuine. I really hope so and that they'll still consider me, but on the other hand I hope to never hear from them again and just forget about the whole thing. I still don't know what happened to the electricity. I reckon it had something to do with too many devices connected to my laptop. I suppose it doesn't matter though. Too long did not read. Today I fucked up by losing my temper when I thought my internet disconnected during a job interview and subjected my interviewers to a meltdown. They were genuine, must have been hilarious for them. This is not a foo. If you get the offer, take it. You can't buy that kind of management. Look on the bright side, you are now very memorable to them. As a British person I can tell you that they loved it. If they didn't then they wouldn't have said anything at all to you and you would have been none the wiser why you didn't get the job. Don't stress this. If anything, it probably helped you. Good luck. Being a South African myself, I can well imagine the words those poor guys have been subjected to tears of joy. They're gonna remember you, hope you get the job, and get known as the swearing person.